Hey, I'm Steve. You're at Steve Tech. Today we are going to talk about camshaft, lobe, shape, and the basic design. I'm going to tell you some of the principles that I follow. and I'm actually going to give you some actual camshaft specs so you actually know what we're talking about. Um, so this is again going to be multi-part series. So I'm just talking about the actual camshaft, lobe, and shape. Uh, not any specific sizes other than I am going to tell you about the stage 3 uh, LS turbo cam shaft. I'll give you the actual specs. No charge. So anyways, we'll put the camera down here and I'll show you some uh, stuff on the board here. Alright, so let's just start with the basic lobe shape. Everybody's already seen it. You basically know what it is, but there's some importance to it. Of how it works. Okay, so obviously this is if this is the the opening side So this is your opening ramp right here And then there's major and minor uh, ramp velocities that are in there, and I'm not going to give you all the exact uh, Terminology all the exact specifics because that isn't really all that important, but this would be your major your major uh, uh, Major acceleration ramp is from your 0 to 50 and then minor is in the uh, 50 to 200 but in our the primary thing that you want to know and what we really look at and work on profiles is most profiles uh, most cam manufacturers most guys are working on a symmetrical lobe and what the symmetrical lobe means is this this entire intake ramp right here the entire thing is symmetrical and is the same as the closing side that's a symmetrical lobe now what you want to have what you want to have is a asymmetrical so everything that we do that I do here let me wipe this off and move it over to the center a little bit everything that I do is going to be in an asymmetrical lobe and to over exaggerate it what an asymmetrical lobe is here's our lobe it's up to peak lift and it'll have this really see how this is a little more aggressive asymmetrical means that the opening ramp is different than the closing ramp and typically it is going to always be more aggressive on the opening side of the lobe than it is on the closing side of the lobe what this does here when you have an asymmetrical lobe is it slows down the closing process so it doesn't bounce the valve if you go back and we we're talking about valves talking about valve springs we talked about bounce and some other issues a lot of that is dictated in the way the lobe profile is now there's guys that spend way more time than i do on all of this there's guys that know much much more than i do on this but i'm telling you what works in the engine what we do how we do it and what you know our success uh, you know stands on its own there, there there's definitely people that know more about this and especially know all the technical terminology and more about things but I'm just telling you what's proven out to work so this asymmetrical lobe de profile is a primary deal of slow that thing down on the exhaust closing so it has more opportunity to not bounce the valve as it closes so what that's doing also is every time if that valve is bouncing when it closes the valve is hanging open and it's bleeding off pressure so the b valve comes up closes and bounces a little bit right through here so let's pretend this was a graph of the valve movement comes down here and tink 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 bounces right there like that that is horsepower loss point blank period when that's not there you'll have and it's smoother that is horsepower gain and when we have a symmetrical lobe to where it comes down and is the same as the intake lobe opening it's like this it has much higher velocity coming down right here has much higher velocity and will have a much greater tendency to bounce and a lot of times what you'll end up doing is it, even when it's uh, bouncing uh, higher valve spring pressure makes it worse 
So this isn't a valve spring issue. It isn't uh, even a, the, anything you do here would just make it worse if the low profile is wrong. There's nothing you're gonna do that's gonna come out here and fix this. So that's what we're doing on an asymmetrical low profile. Everything that I do is on an asymmetrical low profile. Now, let's also talk uh, about uh, on this one uh, because it goes along with the shape of lift. Uh, in a boosted engine, and I, I'm actually going to share stuff, not in this video, probably in the next one, uh, share stuff about the, uh, like in my SMX stuff. So uh, stuff that makes 4,000 plus horsepower, 4,500 plus horsepower, you know, fastest street car in the world, still lives asymmetrical low and has amazingly low lift, comparatively speaking. Lift is pretty unimportant. People get, in, in the grand scheme of things, we're more interested in the, the area that the valve is open. So let's say from here to here, you know, are basically at 50 dimension and are at 200 dimension. This whole area uh, under the curve or however you wanna say that is, is more important than this lobe. Let me do this one more time here. Than this lobe being improperly designed but a big lift. Uh, if you call me up, and people do it all the time, call me up and start talking to me about, I got this lift camshaft, I have, it just means that you don't know and that I can't figure out what you got going on because I don't care what the lift is. I can figure out basically what the lift is based on, on duration numbers of where it should be, but if you just give me lift numbers, I kind of have to backtrack it and just kind of figure it out. But I automatically assume that you don't really know what you're talking about if that's that's your reference of how a camshaft works as a lift. So let's go to like, you know, this real peak lift and a symmetrical lobe. And it's really tall, over exaggerated, like that, versus a smoother profile Something like that. Now this is would end up having a later closing and we'll talk about how that gets d designed into the camshaft with what's called a negative offset. But this low profile here where it's basically a little shorter on duration, this one right here, Real tall lift, symmetrical lobe, pretty common looking setup for what people design. Even camshaft designers will design that. And thinking that, you know, we want to get that peak lift. So it's, this thing makes like, you know, uh, for example, in a pro modified motor, you know, they're looking at, you know, one inch of lift, you know, which is a ton. None, nothing I have is even remotely close to that. <clears throat> and any horsepower I have is close to one inch lift. All right, so uh, let's pretend that's it. And then you have um, uh, the same basic duration. Well, just think how hard it is for the roller lifter to follow this profile and keep control, especially going over the nose and off this back side of the uh, closing ramp, how hard it is for the roller to follow this low profile to get down to here. Very tough, very hard to do and it's not needed. If we kind of try to figure this out from a area mode, because we have this symmetrical, asymmetrical low profile where it's slower closing on the backside, smoother, lower lift, this profile would basically have the same amount of valve lift area from 50 to 50 right here to here as what this really peaky one does right here. You know, what's going on up here is pretty minimal amount of time. I mean, these lobes aren't drawn in correct uh, scaling, but what's happening right here to here is pretty minimal, or here to here, compared to a nice, smooth, gradual profile in an asymmetrical lobe. This thing, there's not a lot of time, not a lot of area in this peak lift area. Plus, it makes it very, very hard to control the valve, control the roller lifter uh, on that sharper curve and that sharper profile. So 
we're not concerned about lift nearly as much as the general overall profile how much area that the valve uh, flows and that's why you like to have you know low lift numbers that kind of stuff but with boost boost is different this is not na i repeat not na na is going to be different that's why i don't do na cams i just work on what i work on every single day which is boosted stuff don't need na cams in boosted they are going to beat up valve train it's not going to be as efficient and it's not needed so we like to have the asymmetrical don't need as much lift that's not nearly as big a deal and to prove it out you know to start the first part of proving it out this camshaft here let me erase this again. This camshaft is our stage three hydraulic roller for LS. Now this camshaft will, will quite easily make in the, uh, if we have enough turbo and enough cylinder head on it, this camshaft realistically would make in the 1800 to 2000 horsepower area if you really want it to. Very easily makes 1500 like all day long, 15, 1600, that's like nothing for this type of camshaft. And be streetable in a hydraulic roller lives forever not a big deal whatsoever okay now in a hydraulic roller obviously because you don't have a whole lot of spring pressure on it the profile of that lobe is just going to be smoother all together but even hydraulic roller profiles typically are going to be a symmetrical lobe they're just really mild symmetrical lobe so it would be shaped you know similar to to that so real, real easy, you know, versus a solid roller, which would be like that. And then, but I still do both in an asymmetrical profile. All right. So just to give you some actual uh, specifications on the, uh, this profile camshaft right here is... For our stage three is at 50 it is 236 246 and so that's our at at 50 duration numbers and our uh, lift number at the lobe is uh, 0.381 0.381 now this is in a asymmetrical profile we'll talk about why we have splits why we don't have splits in duration later it just gets to be a really really long single video but we'll do that later and this is on a 115 plus 4 now the plus 4 is important uh, and we'll get involved in that discussion later because that's all about that negative offset that I said it has of why it needs to be ground in a I'm sorry why it needs to be installed four degrees advanced because there's already a uh, retard the negative offset built into the low profile so anyways you know this thing is going to be I'm sorry this is 116 not 114 116 plus four uh, four degrees advanced so it needs to be installed at 112 as a matter of fact this camshaft if this is installed straight up which would be 116 promise you will make about 200 horsepower less I've, re I've repeated this thing several several times any camshaft of mine that's installed at the wrong wrong uh, installation number <clears throat> will lose significant amount of horsepower and these will lose you know close to 200 horsepower uh, without a doubt so anyways uh, this is good general information that 381 uh, with a 17 rocker arm is Let's see here. I forget what it is off the top of my head. Oops. 647. So this is 647 lift at the valve. And this will make all sorts of horsepower. Now we can do solid roller so we can get a little more RPM, so we can get a little more horsepower. But this is a good, for instance, of what it takes to make basically 2,000 horsepower. I'll show you what it takes to make 4,000 plus horsepower, and you'll flip right out. Now, before I let you go on this one, if you wanted to know the advertised duration number, and because advertised duration number also shows you a little bit more about that uh, asymmetrical profile. So this is 288, 298 is what that is there. 
so it still has a 10 degree spread it doesn't show you everything and that's why I'm always trying to explain to people too is that uh, there will be uh, I don't know, 50 camshafts that have these numbers in it 288 298 and maybe even have 236 246 that does not mean that they <clears throat> that they have a eight uh, a symmetrical profile or asymmetrical profile most of them uh, just because the numbers are the same doesn't mean the lobe actually ends up being the same so there's little things that are involved in here uh, especially at in between these two numbers and then in between this number and zero is where some of that bounce all takes effect so you would never know any kind of difference if you're just going into a catalog and trying to find numbers you can go into a catalog and try finding these exact numbers on a camshaft it will not be this exact camshaft because I have stuff that is ground into this primarily it being an asymmetrical profile so anyways that's this part one of the camshaft and the lobe design shape and what you're looking for uh, it's a little bit of terminology and I'm giving you a, uh, a great camshaft that works really really well anyways I'm Steve Morris Steve Tech